The internal wrangling within the ruling Nepal Communist Party has refused to die down. The dispute that started with the two main factions in the party led by the former CPN UML and the erstwhile CPN Maoist claiming for the much touted school department has now flared up to the other issues as well with the much needed agreement remaining elusive among the top-notch leaders and party ranks and files. Good morning, I am Praram Badahal. Let's begin with the main stories. The pension amount and other financial perks of over 15,000 former Gurkha soldiers deposited at the Indian Reserve Bank causing his deficit of payment of balance to Nepal. The government yet to address the slack procedure which takes at least three months to sign agreements after the announcement of tender calls leading to significant delay in project completion. Trump's administration to make it difficult for poorer migrants to extend their visas or gain permanent resident status in the U.S. The ruling likely to affect applicants for visa extensions, green cards or U.S. citizenship. And English booters at the helm as 83 home footballers featured for 20 clubs in the inaugural week of the brand new season of England's top division, the English Premier League. Let us now begin with the latest national political updates. The ruling Nepal Communist Party's internal dispute regarding the departmental responsibilities is getting more complicated. The party's school and organization departments regarded as important have been claimed by many among the party leaders. Due to the increasing demand against secretariat members taking dual responsibilities, the party's departmental integration has taken a new twist. This has led to the secretariat meeting slated for today to be pushed back by a day. After Ishwar Pokhrel from the then CPN UML and Naren Kazi Shrestha from erstwhile CPN Maoist Center did not back out from claiming the school department of the ruling Nepal Communist Party, the secretariat meeting had been postponed for two weeks in order to give opportunities to other aspirants as well. Apart from Ishwar Pokhrel and Naren Kazi Shrestha, others claiming the school department are secretariat member Jhalanath Khanal and standing committee members Ganesham Busal, Yuvraj Gewali and Bidu Ram Busal. Bamdev Gautam from the former CPN UML, who looked to be unanimously given the responsibility of the organization department in the last proposal, will now have to compete with Ishwar Pokhril and Yuvraj Gewali. On the one hand, the top leaders of the party claiming the important departments are increasing, while on the other, the voices being raised against secretariat members taking dual responsibilities. सीनियर कमरेडले पनि जिम्मेवारीको थुप्रो लगाएर कार्य सम्पादन नगर्नु भन्दा सबै कमरेडहरुले क्षमता योग्यता रुचि अनुरूप चाहिँ एकै गोडा जिम्मा लिने र त्यो जिम्मेवारी चाहिँ दृढतापूर्वक कार्यान्वयन गरेर पालन गरेर जाने कुरा भयो भने पार्टी संस्थाको रूपमा अगाडि बढ्न सक्छ इन द स्टैंडिंग कमिटी अफ द नेपाल कम्युनिस्ट पार्टी देयर आर अ टोटल अफ 45 मेम्बर्स इन्क्लुडिंग मेम्बर्स अफ द टू पार्टीज बिफोर पार्टी युनिफिकेशन दिस हैज लेड टु द डिमांड अफ सेक्रेटेरिएट मेम्बर्स मॉनिटरिंग द पार्टी एन्ड गिविंग देम द रिस्पोंसिबिलिटीज अफ द डिपार्टमेंट्स They have demanded to set a criteria for the process and for qualification and experience. The Kad Bibag Ma, Samathan Bibag, Party School Bibag, this Tad Bibag Ma, say, only body neta rule, khas kiri ke na, sachi bhalai ka sada shiru, this me sista istai committee ka sada shiru ke hili, Rusi rakhnu baasa, or tu kiti aftaru sahi na, tu mile ahi bani jastei. निश्चित मापदंड रबंधित विषयसंग संबंधित व्यक्ति विभाग को विषयगत संबंध हो तो विषयगत संबंध भाई व्यक्ति जिम्मेवारी दिए सजी समाधान कर सकता On the face of the ongoing disputes, the ruling party is yet to finalize the responsibilities of 166 leaders. Now, it has come to the light that the pension amount and other financial perks of over 15,000 former Gorkha soldiers have been deposited at the Indian Reserve Bank instead of the Central Bank in Nepal. Even as the tripartite agreement signed between Nepal, India and Britain some seven decades ago does not mention about the provision of parking the money in the Indian Central Bank due to lack of diplomatic initiative, some 13 billion rupees is channeled to Nepal through the Indian Reserve Bank on an annual basis. As per the tripartite agreement signed between Nepal, India and Britain in November 1947, Nepalese youth to get recruited in the British Army every year. However, none of the clauses in the agreement mentioned about depositing the pension and other financial assistance in the Indian Central Bank. 
The amount in sterling pounds has been deposited in the Indian Reserve Bank and the ex-British Gorkhas have been receiving the equivalent amount in Indian currency. British the number of ex Gorkha soldiers and their immediate family members who have been receiving the pension amount from the Indian pension camp currently stands at 15,700 as they have been receiving 13.25 billion rupees annually. It has been long that the former British Gorkha soldiers had demanded for the transfer of the amount directly into the central bank in Nepal. Nepal National Bank saw that the carbar ka bioron has been heard. That is, British Gorkha, ma carjat Nepal nagari korko, kya sarhar baato prato hai ko rakam ji Nepal National Bank ma si. The government sadly has not taken a diplomatic initiative in this regard. Spokesperson at the Foreign Ministry, Varad Ras Podal, refused to comment on the issue, expressing his ignorance about the entire episode. The scenario is also having its impact over the country's balance of payment. It is now time for a short break, but for more news, do stay with us. The delay in the projects of public infrastructure has stranded a number of projects. Although the government announced three rulings in favor of the contractors in the past two and a half months, the government is yet to address the slack procedure, which takes at least three months to sign agreements with the government after the announcement of tender calls. As per the Public Procurement Act, there is a provision of keeping a deadline of 30 days from the day of the tender announcement for contracting development works. This is followed by a deadline of 15 days for evaluation, 7 days for complaints, and another 22 days for hearing of complaints received. There is an additional 15-day deadline before signing the contract after the completion of the hearing process. It means that it will require a 3-month time period to sign the contract papers after the tender announcement. In the meantime, if any complaints are filed, it will further delay the process. Along with the tedious contract process, the modus operandi of the government officials is equally frustrating. The officials are still operating in traditional ways in today's age of ultra-modern information technology. The problems persist in the selection of the projects as well, all contributing to the execution aspects of these development projects. It is now time for the international news. U.S. President Donald Trump's administration is to make it more difficult for poorer legal migrants to extend their visas or gain permanent resident status or the green card. The rule targets migrants who rely on public benefits such as food aid or public housing for more than a year. Their applications will be rejected if the government decides they are likely to rely on public assistance in future. The U.S. officials said that the rule change would reinforce ideals of self-sufficiency. The new regulation, known as a public choice rule, was published in the Federal Register earlier today and will take effect on the 15th of October. Immigrants who are already permanent residents in the U.S. are unlikely to be affected by the change in rule. It also does not apply to refugees and asylum applicants. But applicants for visa extensions, green cards or U.S. citizenship will be subject to the change. Those who do not meet income standards or who are deemed likely to rely on benefits such as Medic aid, government-run healthcare or housing vouchers in future may be blocked from entering the country. Those already in the U.S. could also have their applications rejected. An estimated 22 million legal residents in the U.S. are without citizenship and many of these are likely to be affected. Civil rights group have, groups have said the move unfairly targets low-income immigrants. The National Immigration Law Center has said it will sue the Trump administration to stop the regulation from taking effect. But the White House said the current system favors immigrants with family ties rather than those who are self-sufficient and do not strain on their public resources. We've got more news coming up, but right now it is time for yet another short break. Welcome back. In our public voice segment, we had asked the locals in Udaipur district why have the prices of vegetables skyrocketed. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. Public voice. 
नेवा देखी एवडा करसाबारी में लगा तरकारी दुई क्विंटल चार क्विंटल तरकारी ने धान वाले छेन अनुदान दिए व्यावसायिक तरकारी खेती कराए हैं तरकारी के भाव अवश्य निंत्रण हो स्थानीय व्यक्ति आपूल खेती करने सबजा भर गए पी अल धेरे तरकारी उब्जे पे तो अलग सस्त हो सब जागृत भर तरकारी खेती नहीं अभी तो भाई सस्त हो नत्र एक दुईजना लगन अति पे माने कि खाने बिचौली यहाँ से यो हटा सको देखि निण नी ये हट्दन ये ये बिचौलि का हाथ में पड़े पीछे यो भाव चाह अकाश्य को अकाश्य हो तरकारी अब खेती में लागत घटना पर्यटन तो बजार व्यवस्था को लगी अब नगर पालिक पल कर काम कोई मंदेन सब बस्ने अभी भर अब महंगो भाग सरकार ने अनुदान दिए यहीं उदयपुरम तरकारी होने खेती योग्य जमीन भी तो जमीन को खोजी करो तेस में तरकारी खेती लगाइयो लगन लाइयो तरकारी को मूल्य कहीं कम हो It is now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public Pulse. The question is why has the number of students in community schools declined every year? Your options are A, degrading education quality, B, incorrect initial statistics, and C, more attraction towards private schools. The voting is on. You can type any WS, select your option A, B, or C and then send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Time now for the sports news. Sports news. A total of 83 English footballers featured for 20 clubs in the inaugural week of the brand new season of England's top division, the English Premier League. The figure is the highest in 9 years. Of these 83 players, 22 play for the top 6 sides. 37.73% of the footballers who featured in the game week 1 of the planet's most popular league were English nationals. The last time when the highest number of English footballers featured in the game week one was back in the season of 2010 and 11, when 85 English nationals had made it to the playing squad. All the English footballers who played for the top six sides were under 30 and had an average age of 23 years, 351 days. A 4-1 crushing win for Manchester United over Chelsea at Old Trafford featured five English players in one: Vissaka, Harry Maguire, Luke Shaw, Jesse Lingard, and Marcus Rashford. Likewise, Chelsea, who are serving a transfer ban themselves alongside Manchester City, Arsenal, and Tra- Tottenham Hotspur, have given opportunities to young English players. Most sports news: European champions and runners-up of last season at the English Premier League, Liverpool, are all set to miss their goalkeeper Alisson for a few weeks. Alisson suffered an injury in the league opener against Norwich and has been ruled out by manager Jurgen Klopp for immediate availability. 26-year-old Brazilian goalkeeper Alisson has suffered a calf injury. Alisson was substituted in the 39th minute by Liverpool's recent signing Adrian. The Brazilian had returned to Liverpool following the Copa America victory for his nation at the end of the pre-season. He was instrumental for Liverpool in his debut season following the transfer from Roma as Liverpool won the Champions League and was second in the EPL table just behind winners Manchester City. With the injury, Alisson is likely to miss the Super Cup clash against Chelsea. It is now time for the special segment Sports Buzz. European champions Liverpool have marked a winning start at the inaugural match of the brand new season of the English Premier League. Liverpool crushed aside Norwich 4-1 in their season opener. Liverpool scored four first half goals but failed to add to their tally in the second 45 minutes. The very first goal of the season was an own goal by Norwich captain Grant Hanley. Tottenham Hotspur also marked a winning start to their season as Harry Kane scored a brace to brush aside Aston Villa 3-1. There were prospects of a stunning victory for the new entrants to the EPL season as Aston Villa led by a goal with just over 15 minutes remaining. However, three late goals helped save Mauricio Pochettino's blushes. Earlier, John McGinn had put Villa ahead in the 9th minute. It was Thangi Ndombele who equalized for Spurs in the 73rd minute, followed by Kane's brace as he found the net in the 86th and the 90th minute. Elsewhere Manchester United humbled Chelsea 4-0 in their very first match of the season. This is the first time since 1965 that Manchester United have thrashed Chelsea by such a margin. Manchester United led through Marcus Rashford's penalty in the 18th minute of the match played at Old Trafford. Having suffered a 1-0 deficit in the first half, 
Frank Lampard's side conceded three more goals in the second half due to poor defending in counter-attacks. Anthony Marshall, Rashford and Daniel James were on the score sheet in the second half to spoil Lampard's first EPL match as Chelsea manager. In other Premier League matches, Arsenal saw off Newcastle United 1-0 while Leicester and Wolves shared a point each. This is Pradamadhal for Kandipu News Task. And now before we wrap up, here's a look at the top stories one more time. The pension amount and other financial perks of over 15,000 former Gorkha soldiers deposited at the Indian Reserve Bank causing huge deficit of balance of payment in Nepal. The government yet to address the slack procedure which takes at least three months to sign agreements after the announcement of tender calls leading to significant delay in project completion. Trump's administration makes it difficult for poorer migrants to extend their visas or gain permanent residence in the U.S. The ruling likely to affect applicants for visa extensions, green cards or U.S. citizenship. And English booters at the helm as 83 homegrown footballers featured for 20 clubs in the inaugural week of the brand new season of the England's top division English Premier League. That is all for the moment. Our next English bulletin is at 11 a.m. Keep watching Kantipur Television SD for more news and entertainment. Thank you for watching. Have a beautiful day ahead.